The whole thing started with a commission in 2007 by Music of Remembrance and this wonderful, amazing woman, Minna Miller. And her organization has always been devoted to exploring untold stories of the Holocaust, many, many different perspectives. And she had always wanted to do a piece about the persecution of gays during the Holocaust because nothing had been done. And it's a chamber music series, so she had never done an opera. She had only done song cycles and chamber pieces. And then she asked me to write this piece, and I was sort of hugely challenged. And I thought it might be a song cycle, but the deeper I got into it, the more I realized it really needed to be like a one-act opera. And that became a piece called For a Look or a Touch. And I worked with Jean Shear, the librettist on that. And I learned so much from doing that piece. First of all, I did not know about the persecution of gays during the Holocaust. That was news to me. And we found this amazing documentary called Paragraph 175. And that's when we first heard this man, Gad Beck, tell his story. And he talked about this 19-year-old lover that he'd had in Berlin who his entire family, he and his entire family were taken to Auschwitz and murdered. And we realized that could be the germ of our story. So it was, a, it was based on something true and real, felt very alive, and it felt like we could explore the emotional architecture of that and making the story work for this chamber music series as a, an opera. The next piece that came along, Minna Miller came back and she asked us to write a story about this Polish woman, Krystyna Zawolska, who survived Auschwitz by becoming a camp poet. She would write words to tunes that everyone knew and they'd spread virally through the camp. And a capo who recognized her talent and appreciated what she did for the camp and for the spirit and morale of everyone gave her a permanent job where she wouldn't be at risk of being killed. So suddenly we had this piece about this one woman. I mean, these are really dark stories, but they're also fascinating because they are stories of survival. And they're not your typical story of survival. They're about people making different choices in their life, rewriting the story of their life in order to survive every day, and then choosing what they can remember and how they can remember it. They're both intensely emotional stories, and those are the stories that inspire music for me. Very intense, personal, transformative, emotional journeys. There's a famous quote that I always say uh, at the beginning of a rehearsal that directing is 75% casting. Once you cast the right people, you, don't, you just have to stay out of their way. And I, I feel that in this instance, with Out of Darkness, uh, casting was 90% of directing because we really assembled uh, just a wonderful group of people. And the overarching idea behind it all uh, started with a conversation with Jake Hagee who refers to himself as a music theater composer. Not musical theater, not opera, but music theater, where theater is just as important as music. And I strongly believe in that concept. I believe in stories and in breaking barriers between opera, theater, dance. It's all means to serve one thing. So with that concept in mind, I contacted two of my colleagues that I admire greatly. Uh, one from the theater world, the artistic director of theatrical outfit, Tom Key, who's playing the lead role of Gad Beck, and he's brilliant. And the other colleague is John McFall, the former artistic director of the ballet, who brings a great sensibility to this production. And together, we came up uh, with the casting for it. So John McFall recommended dancers that would be also good actors, uh, that would move well, but also convey a story in a way that is theatrical. Uh, and with uh, Jake Hagee, and Gene Shear, we started the process of um, trying to figure out who would be the most appropriate for those roles. I've had the pleasure of choreographing for opera in my career, but this is really unique because the cast, each individual, is a singer, an actor, and a dancer. So bringing all of those qualities together to identify characters, relationships, to tell a story. It's a fascinating process. It's not so much about 
kinetically doing choreography, it's really more important to tell that story. And yes, of course, everyone's moving. That's important how they move and what they're doing. But what really matters is the story. So that's where the focus is. I think once people see Out of Darkness to remain, there are two words that will never be exactly the same. And one is forget and one is remember. And dramatically and viscerally and existentially, what it means to intentionally forget and what it can mean to remember, to recreate, to bring, not to go back to the past and nostalgia and sentimentalize it or revise what happened, but to remember what has happened is the way in which we progress bringing that to the present is how we progress as we evolve as human beings. So as an actor, as a playwright, as a director, as artistic director of Theatrical Outfit, when Tomer invited me to this, I knew this was one of those lifetime opportunities where there was a confluence of space and talent and intention. It wouldn't be the first time that I've been able to portray a real person, but in this case, there's something added to this one. Um, you know, it's so poignant for today's world. It has so much more meaning than just the war, communism, what she went through, Auschwitz. It's something that we really have to see and feel and understand, and it couldn't be more timely, really. I think, like all great art, this is a piece that allows you to feel something really profound in the two hours that you're sitting there. Um, you have to be ready for this experience going in. I mean, everybody can see what this subject matter is going into it, so they're not going to be surprised. This allows people who don't have an experience with this maybe personally or maybe who have avoided dealing with the feelings that this that the Holocaust gives them. It, it allows them to see it in a more personal light. And what Jake does and Jake and Jean have done is that they put it with this beautiful music and allow you to kind of go on this journey in a gentle way and see it through the eyes of one person and the experience of these women and these two men. My first day, Tomer kind of asked us about what our knowledge and relationship to the Holocaust is, was. And I'm one of the non-Jewish actor-singers and I also grew up in part of the country, south of Houston, not a big met metropolitan area, where we, there wasn't, there was no Jewish community center, there was not a large Jewish community. and. And so um, I had no idea that besides um, Jewish peoples being taken in the camps that there were also African Americans, um, mentally handicapped people had a particular designation in the camps. Homosexual people had a particular designation in the camps. Um, and they each wore a badge um, to single them out for why they were in the camps. So to me, I think these are the kind of things that if you don't talk about and tell these stories, that those are the kind of things that can fall away and we can forget about. So yeah, um, I think remembrance is extremely important or else we'll forget. This show is not for entertainment. It's not us entertaining you or charming you. There is some of that in this show, of course, because it is an opera and it is art and music, so of course there is that element. But people are going to walk away from this pensive. They're going to be thinking and they're going to be emotional. And I think that shows like this are so important because we tell stories through art not just to entertain, we tell stories through art to learn and to remember, which is what this show is all about, to remember what happened and so it never happens again. Moving to a small hall, the audience, you cannot escape the drama. I mean, we are such a visual society right now. We see everything on our devices and we're up close to it. The theater experience is moving towards that. The audience needs to be enveloped in the energy on the stage. When you go to a 3,000 seat auditorium and you're in row L, you lose that kinetic energy. So in the small space, you cannot escape it. You cannot escape the energy from the stage, from the musicians. All of that electricity, it just is going to resonate in the audience. 
you're trying to honor uh, the, the, the lives that you're representing, but you're also trying to, you know, uh, Bonar had this, the, the painter had this great line that art is lots of lies making up one great truth or a great truth. And so I mean, what we're really trying to do is, is to honor the emotional reality of these people's lives. The facts that are, are portrayed in the, in the piece are, are accurate, um, but there's, there's some poetic license without question as we've created, you know, putting these, uh, these two stories on stage. But what we're trying to do ultimately is allow music to uh, depict the emotional reality of these people's lives, because that's why we're here. That's why we love opera, because uh, music is uh, this incredible conduit for the human heart. There are very few operas, and I've directed quite a few at this point, there are very few productions where I know, even before the opening, that it's an emotional piece that's going to really resonate with audience members for days and months after they have seen that show. Uh, I, when I think about some of my greatest um, pleasures of working on other pieces, I think about Silent Night, which had a similar impact and dove in a similar way into the deepest emotions and humanity of human beings. And I feel that Out of Darkness has that. And one of the things that Silent Night uh, had in it is that at the end of the show, there was silence. There was silence of like 15 long seconds because the audience needed that time to have all the things that they saw and heard absorb and sink and uh, they needed that time to digest and I have a feeling that Out of Darkness is very similar in that we will need the silence at the end. I look at this story, the Holocaust, as happening yesterday. In the context of history it still resonates. There are still a few people that live today that were there and unfortunately Humans treat other humans, oftentimes, very badly. And it's very uh, relevant to what's going on in the world today. And it'll help, I think, generations of the future to understand, realize, and embrace that relationships and people need to be respected, appreciated, and a little bit of love doesn't hurt either. There is a primal, mysterious reality to what happens when flesh and blood, human people, are sharing and breathing the same air for a couple of hours, and language and music and story is center stage. It's the first thing that a tyrant wants to abolish, and it's the one thing that makes a democracy and a community survive when we can understand, even though the plot of that person's story had nothing to do with my experience, I see myself in it. And if that person's story has meaning, maybe mine has meaning too. Maybe even there's a plot to life itself. It's the flesh and blood aliveness that's irreplaceable. It's irreplaceable. I think opera is one of the most powerful art forms that exist because it's able to tell a story in a way that no other medium is able to because when words are not enough, the music takes over. And when the music is not enough, the voice takes over. I mean, that takes us to such heights. And the problem or the challenge with that is that it is so emotional that it can be over the top if we're not careful. And I find that some of my favorite composers in the world, and there's really, there's a few of them, but when I think about my top, it's Puccini and Jake Hagee. And both of them are really walking on that fine line of profoundly touching people's emotions. They know how to do that. And for that I admire them profoundly. But if you're not careful with their music, if you're trying to add to it too much, it can become sentimental. And we don't want that to come across between the audience and the story because it will soften the blow that an honest story will have. That's the danger of sentimentality. It's a very exciting time for opera. I think there's people who are, I mean communities all, all across the country are 
uh, getting excited about uh, these new stories being told, stories, um, uh, new kinds of stories, stories from their communities um, uh, that, that are being told in musical form. And uh, rather than going, it's wonderful to go to another La Boheme and it's to watch, new, watch it being interpreted in a new way. But when it's something that's really new, it's really pretty exciting. I think this is a watershed moment for the company uh, and for the city because it's a new piece for this company with a major important admired composer, Jake Hagee. But for the city, I think it's a very important statement that we are breaking barriers, that we are not confining ourselves to some sort of dogma of what opera is or what theater is or what dance is. Everything is the same. They're all tools that are telling a story. And simply because of the way we chose to tell that story, we are breaking those barriers. Because in an ideal world, audience should not be thinking, is this an opera? Is this theater? Is this dance? It's just a story that is being told with performers that are highly committed to this story and are highly passionate about how they do that. See, the thing is, with opera, it only exists when it's being performed. You can listen to a recording, but that's not really the opera. The opera is a live stage piece. And that's the goal, is to make that magic happen. So that people aren't thinking about notes on a page. They're not thinking about measures. They're not thinking about meters. They're so involved with the characters and their journeys, that, and they care about them. And they want to know what happens next to that person. And they can be, again, it feels inevitable and surprising. And then different performers will inhabit those roles and bring something else to it. Just like different directors will bring a new vision to a piece. Um, and that's kind of the excitement. So that I've created something that is strong enough that it stands on its own, and yet individual performers can bring something fresh to it with their perspective and their talents and their history and what they have to say specifically. And then I'll learn something about the piece from them.